Hey guys, so I'm recording this early because I have to be a chauffeur for all of the open house prospective students and everything, which means I don't have any time to record a video. And today I'm going to talk about Game of Thrones, the TV show. Well, at least the first season. Season 3 comes out in a couple weeks or something, um, and I still have eight more episodes of season 2 to go, so we're going to talk about season 1 today. I knew there was a feud between the Starks and the Lannisters when I started watching, but I didn't realize quite how many families there were, how many plots there were in Game of Thrones. The first episode kept jumping around to introduce like 15 plots, and when it ended I wasn't much more than confused. But by a couple episodes more, I could see that we were supposed to be sympathetic to the Starks, and then all the other characters were either good or bad, depending on whether they were for or against the Starks. At least that's the story in Westeros. On the other side of some body of water, the Narrow Sea or something like that, there are a bunch of unaffiliated cities, as well as bands of roving horse warriors called the Dothraki. Dothraki? They all have such strange accents, I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce any of these things. I watched the special features and they're supposed to be a combination of the Mongols and Native American tribes. They're not loyal to any Westeros family. Maybe in the books it talks more about this other continent, but I'm really interested in the politics over there. I feel like there's a lot more untold stories than what we're getting. We do get to hear a little bit of the Dothraki story. There's this leader dude, Drogo, who's apparently the greatest Dothraki leader dude ever. He has really long hair because if you defeat a Dothraki warrior, then you cut off their hair. The Dothraki speak a different language from the rest of the characters, which means that the viewers get subtitles and the other characters get translators. The Dothraki have curved swords instead of the straight ones that the rest of the characters carry. All of this, plus the fact that the Dothraki are riding around without shirts on, makes them into intriguing, somewhat savage, somewhat mysterious people. Now, this show is perpetuating the noble savage stereotype somewhat, and more than once the Dothraki are referred to as uncivilized. But they seem to me to be more interesting than the Westeros characters precisely because their motives are so mysterious. The Dothraki aren't going after the Iron Throne that the rest of the characters are so concerned with. I can pretty much understand what drives the Starks and the Lannisters and the Baratheons and whoever else because they come from a culture very similar to the medieval Western Europeans that I'm so familiar with. I can't figure out the Dothraki or why they do what they do. Every episode I'm left with more questions, whereas with the Starks and Lannisters and whoever else, every episode it, it answers questions and it makes the picture more clear. I wish we get to learn more about the Dothraki, but the end of season 1 kind of made that unlikely. Hopefully season 2 won't abandon the other non-Westeros continent entirely. And Kayla, I look forward to your thoughts on the book tomorrow.